to the glory of God and the support of the good people of Ogun State. We start a new chapter in the continued development agenda of this great state. Thank you so much for joining us for another episode of Gateway Diary and Victoria on Niaye. Here is what to expect on the program today. Governor Dakwa Abiodun rolls out 100 more CNG buses for commuters in Ogun State to cushion impact of high cost of patrol. Workers will get new minimum wage soon. That's Governor Dakwa Abiodun's promise to the labor union. We'll tell you more about that. Plus, a quick tour of the newly constructed 18-kilometer Idowa Ala Igbefun Road, another project that's making it easier to do business in Ogun. We have all these stories and a lot more coming your way in a moment. Let's begin with our first story. Governor Dapo Abiodun really understands how important transport is to the economy of any state. That's why for the past five years, he's been focusing a lot of attention on this particular sector. And the results are easy to see. Those bright yellow CNG powered buses, electric motorcycles zipping around, and of course, the Gateway Agrocargo Airport. But in light of the current situation across the country, Governor Abiodun is making sure his people stay comfortable. That's why he's adding another 100 CNG buses to the fleet. He shared this good news in a meeting with the transport unions. Let's talk about the transportation sector in Ogun State, shall we? That's a sector where Prince Dakwa Biodon is really making waves as a strategist, innovator and pioneer. For the past five years, Governor Biodon has been on a mission which is not only to promote energy transition and cut down carbon emissions, but also to help thousands of residents save on transportation costs. Now, you're probably wondering how he's pulling all this off. Well, let's break it down. The governor is using a smart multimodal transport model that taps into the benefits of public-private partnerships. This forward-thinking approach has led to some major breakthroughs. We're talking about the Gateway Agrocargo Airport, compressed natural gas CNG buses running through the state capital, Abelkuta, and even serving the Lagos border communities. We strategically and proactively formulated our Ogun State Energy Transition Policy and what we are witnessing today is the commencement of the implementation of that policy. We are doing that by deploying the use of our compressed natural gas fuel mass transit buses and our e-mobility for our motorcycles and try And there's more. In a groundbreaking partnership with Spyro Nigeria Limited, the state government rolled out 2,000 electric motorbikes, the first of its kind in any state, with plans to add electric tricycles and vehicles down the road in coming months. 
These steps are not just forward thinking. They are Governor Biodun's way of protecting Ogun residents through the constant rise in transportation costs. Governor Dakwa Biodun knows that the transportation sector is the lifeblood of any economy. He is also aware of the spike in transport fares across the state and across the country. True to the oath he took during his inauguration, he is laser-focused on solving this challenge. Very early on in the administration of His Excellency, even before um, CNG became fashionable, if I may say so, we had come to the realization uh, that they have, we had a resource in terms of compressed natural gas that can be introduced into the transportation system in Ogun State to try and reduce the cost of transportation for our people. Here, Governor Dakwa Biodo meets with the heads of transport unions across the state alongside key security agencies, the Commissioner of Police, the Director of the Department of State Service, the Ogun State Traffic Compliance and Enforcement Agency, TRACE, and other top officials. The goal is to hammer out a way to ease the cost of transportation in the state. The change in price is probably about, in percentage terms, maybe about 25, maybe 30%. 25 or 30%. So if pump prices have changed by 25, 30%, we should not see a difference in transport fares that is more than 25 or 30 percent. Governor Abiodun takes the conversation a notch higher, outlining what he and his partners are doing to tackle this pressing issue. However, the big announcement is that the federal government, through the Presidential Compressed Natural Gas Initiative, will be distributing 20 more CNG-powered buses and donating 500 CNG conversion kits to the state. And these buses will be brand buses, not a uh, new name bus. We are talking about Toyota Highs buses that will give to you As for his contribution, Governor Biodon promises to add 100 more 1820-seater CNG buses to the existing fleet, making sure Ogun residents have even more affordable transport options. He is not stopping there. To prevent transporters from hiking fares unfairly, a new task force is being set up by the state government. This committee, according to the governor, will work closely with transport unions, fix reasonable fare prices, and ensure that everyone sticks to the rule. We create a task force here that will be led by our uh, uh, police department and our state of security services, supported by uh, our trace people, that will be present at our top part to ensure that what we agree on is being enforced. That we agree that. If you are going to retouch, you will be one naira. You are going to uh, go back where you will be five naira. You are going to go away, you are going to leave us, it's ten naira. And it's ten naira. Anybody that does anything otherwise is undermining us as a state government. The transport union agrees with Governor Biodun's proposition and they thank him for his efforts and pledge their full support in keeping transport costs manageable for the people. And promise we will do within the ambit of our power to make sure that we call all the major stakeholders, all hands must be on deck. We will do everything humanly possible to make sure that they are not inflict unnecessary outrageous prices on our citizens. Once again, Governor Dagwa Biodun is showing his proactive leadership and dedication to addressing any challenge that threatens the well-being of Ogun State's residents. He is not only leading by example, he is demonstrating to everyone that quality leadership can still be experienced at the state level. Let's turn attention to another story. 
For Governor Dapo Abiodun, fixing roads is about much more than just patching up asphalt. It's about easing the stress residents have endured for years and making it easier to get business done in the state. Since becoming governor, he's been working hard to reduce the infrastructure gap he inherited, and that has led to over 600 kilometers of roads either constructed or reconstructed. One standout is a newly completed 18-kilometer Idowa Alai Befu Road, which has really opened up more communities along the way for more business opportunities. In Ogun State today, you'd have to be either out of touch or playing political games to deny that Governor Dapo Abudun is building roads, opening up communities and fixing abandoned roads. Before he assumed office as governor, major highways and township roads across the state were in shambles. Potholes were the size of craters and major township roads were practically falling apart. These roads were not just inconveniencing the people, they were costing residents their livelihoods and, in some heartbreaking cases, their lives or limbs. But Governor Abiodun, a man who promised to serve his people and serve them well, rolled up his sleeves and got to work without looking back. Since then, he has flipped the script, constructing more than 600 kilometers of roads across all 20 local government areas of the state. And guess what? There is still more where that came from. For Governor Abiodun, road construction isn't just about laying down asphalt. It's about breathing new life into communities, opening doors to economic opportunities and making daily life easier for residents. It's also about making Ogun State a hub for business, where commerce can thrive and where getting from point A to point B is no longer an uphill battle. This road that you see today that we constructed has now allowed those that are coming from the farm and traders and businesses to display their goods and sell them to willing buyers. In the course of construction, a lot of opportunities presented themselves. Take for instance the 18-kilometer Ijebode Idowarbefun Road in the Odobolu local government area of Ogun East Senatorial District. This road is a shining example of Governor Biodun's mission to transform the state. Now, this road wasn't just any road. It's an alternative route linking Ijebode to Lagos. But for years, it was a death trap. Riddled with accidents, it was so bad that motorists avoided it like a plague, bringing economic activities in the area to a screeching halt. Um, before it was reconstructed, the road is too bad that we cannot even pass through here to Ijebode. We need to go through Ososa to Ijebode. The road was in a state of comatose before, but uh, since the governor came to our aid and reconstructed it at least, We've been having a good time. But that is all in the past now. Thanks to Governor Abiodun, the road has been completely transformed. Smooth asphalt, crisp line markings and a proper drainage system to keep it intact for years to come. Residents couldn't be more grateful. After years of enduring hardship and neglect, they've finally seen the light. With the road now in perfect shape, economic activities are bouncing back and the influx of vehicles is a testament to the road's rebirth. This road is one of the best roads so far in Djibouti. Normally, I'm a farmer, but I just used one just to hustle a little. If I Maybe I go to somewhere, the road is not fine. 
I will quickly weak. I will not be able to work like three hours, two hours. But okay, I started working from seven o'clock and I'm still able to work. Dobi, Dowa, Dobi, Dowa, and I'm okay with it. Uh, it's a listening governor, like I can say. Because if he's not a listening governor, uh, the cabbage will not call him. Then he will say, okay, I'm going to do this. And later he came to do it. Within a shortest period of time, he came to do it. As we all know, infrastructural developments, for instance, the road itself, so it's one of the major. Uh, I, one of the major basic amenities we need and since it is provided so uh, we really appreciate this this stretch of road stands as a proof of governor abiodun's commitment to connecting communities not just within ogun state but with the rest of the country and it's not just about connections it's about boosting the east of doing business turning Ogun State into a true economic powerhouse. Before we wrap things up today, let's tell you that since Governor Dakwa Biodun took office, he has been a solid advocate for Ogun State workers and there's been no doubt about his commitment to their welfare. And you know what? Better days are ahead for everyone in the state as he has already provided health insurance, cleared the arrears owed by the previous administration and even given transport allowances to help ease the impact of fuel subsidy removal. But he's not stopping there. The governor has promised to do more, starting with implementing the new minimum wage because he's fully aware of the economic realities. The true mark of a great leader is when they inspire others to carry the torch forward. For more than five years, Governor Dakwa Biodun of Ogun State has put workers' welfare at the top of his priority list. And that's because he understands that these men and women are not just civil servants. They are the heartbeat, the engine room of the state's economy. When Governor Abiodun stepped into office, the previous administration had left some unpaid arrears for workers. But he took the bull by the horns and ensured those workers got what they were owed within a short period of time. He ensured that no stone was left unturned in making sure they were paid. In terms of health care, unlike his predecessors, Governor Abiodun raised the bar. He launched the formal health insurance scheme, tailored specifically for the workers, ensuring they had access to health care they deserve. Now, they can all breathe a sign of relief knowing their health is in good hands. Governor Dakwa Biodun didn't stop there. He understood that transportation costs had skyrocketed due to certain federal policies, and so he swung into action. He rolled out compressed natural gas CNG buses, making it easier and cheaper for workers to get around. Not just that, on top of their salaries, he introduced transport allowances, easing their daily burdens. And when food prices shot through the roof, affecting families across the state, Governor Abiodo made sure the workers got their fair share of the state's palliatives, offering much-needed relief. All these initiatives have earned him the fitting title, the Workers' Friendly Governor. But Prince Dakwa Biodun isn't resting on his laurels. He knows the country's economy is in a transitional phase and he is gearing up to soften the impact for Ogun State's workers. And they're talking of uh, the various incentives uh, you know, which has to do with cushioning the effect of uh, this uh, you know, 
increase in pump price of efficiency has done a lot. Um, as an allowance for health workers, a peculiar allowance for you know, workers in the mainstream, CNG bus for workers to continue to convey them from Utah to the workplace, and then even the 10,000 transport allowance across the board, both for pensioners and state workforce. He is here with the head of service, Mr. Kende Onosoya, and other cabinet members sitting down with organized labor leaders. They are in talks, ironing out new strategies and reviewing existing ones, all to help workers weather this economic storm. The reason why I call this meeting is not far-fetched. Um, yesterday I called a meeting of the leadership of the transport unions. I felt it's important to begin this kind of engagement with different sectors that are either contributive or responsible for facilitating the movement of our people from one point to the other, or those who also represent the voice of our people. Governor Dakwa Biodun has more good news up his sleeve, with civil servants at the forefront of the beneficiaries. Governor Biodun is looking into reducing the number of work days across all grade levels, cutting down on transportation costs even more. The revision of the number of days of workers, I uh, received a letter. Um, in fact, I had attention to uh, uh, members of my team to uh, look at it when you were talking. I said, you go and bring that letter for me. And um, let me assure you that in the next uh, 24 hours, I uh, will come out with uh, something workable that you find acceptable. And in a partnership with the federal government, Governor Abiodun promises to roll out a new phase of the state's subsidized food initiative, another effort to help make life easier for the people. We went ahead, we procured food items, particularly rice. And I believe that we are the first state to begin to sell rice at heavily subsidized prices. So not just service civil servants, but also our pensioners as well. Believing that they are the same ones that go into our various markets because we had a problem in trying to determine how do we you know, make this rice available to the teaming public? How do we ensure that it goes around in the first instance before people start coming back to buy more? We sat down with the head of service and my team and we said, let our civil servants be the first beneficiaries. And indeed, it was very successful. We're getting ready for another round of such initiative. This time, this initiative has been adopted by the federal government, and the federal government is making rights available to us to sell at heavily subsidized prices. If that's not enough to smile about, civil servants in Ogun State can rest assured that a new minimum wage is on its way, and Ogun will be the first state in the country to implement it. That's because Governor Abiodun is always leading from the front. On the minimum wage, um, which is probably the biggest elephant in the room, um, uh, which you have not raised because of the trust and confidence you have in my leadership. Uh, but I feel that I must uh, mention the fact that uh, we are all hands are on deck, you know, working assiduously. And I'm sure that, you know, as always, we will not be number two in the implementation of the minimum wage. <laughs> the 
These workers are full of praise for their governor. They are grateful for his tireless efforts in prioritizing their well-being through countless programs, projects and interventions. We were invited to appraise what the entire team had done. Today is another thing where I must say a very big thank you for this kind gesture. It's a very good elevation from petrol to CNG and even we are seeing electric and I'm very sure very soon solar will be involved. There's one thing to have a governor. Another thing is to have a governor that will have the interest of the masses at heart. We want to thank you for being merciful for the plight of workers at the citizens of, of, of our state. In all of these, one thing is certain. While the country may be navigating through a transitional phase that is affecting many families in Ogun State, they have got a leader who truly understands their struggles and is ready to walk alongside them every step of the way. And that's a wrap for today. Thanks so much for hanging out with us. We'll be back with more updates and stories in the next episode of Gateway Diary. Until then, I am Victoria Oniaye. Take care and see you soon.